Advanced Physical Therapy Education Institute. Thank you for joining me for this short video on shoulder range of motion evaluation without a goniometer. Shoulder range of motion using a goniometer has been shown to have good reliability in some studies and also poor reliability in other studies with up to 25 degrees of measurement error. There are studies to show that the use of smartphone for measuring shoulder range of motion to also have acceptable reliability. When it comes to quickly measuring range of motion in a busy practice, I have however personally found the use of both goniometer and smartphones cumbersome. I'd like to share with you today five easy shoulder range of motion outcome measures that I believe you'll find clinically valuable. Sorry, I have no studies on their reliability yet. So let's begin. Shoulder outcome measure number one, medial rotation, also known as the hand behind back test. You may use a standard measuring tape and simply measure the distance from the most prominent spinous process at the cervical thoracic junction, C7 or T1, to the tip of the thumb. The C7 is the most prominent spinous process in 75% of people and T1 is most prominent in 25% of people. The fact is, it doesn't matter which spinous process is used as long as it's the same one used, the most prominent one, for both left and right shoulder and in between sessions. I use this outcome measure on all my patients who report a pain and limitation with hand behind back, such as those with impingement syndrome and adhesive capsulitis. Shoulder outcome measure number two, lateral rotation at zero degrees abduction. You may use a standard measuring tape and simply measure the distance between the umbilicus and the radial styloid process. Just make sure that the arm is kept tightly by their side, elbow is flexed to 90 degrees, and the forearm is in neutral pronation supination, meaning the thumb is pointing up. I use this outcome measure on all my patients with shoulder pain to rule out adhesive capsulitis. A traumatic loss of lateral rotation at zero degrees abduction is the strongest predictor of adhesive capsulitis. Shoulder outcome measure number three, wall reach-up test. You may use a stick-on wall measuring tape, which is part of the star mat package, and simply measure the distance reached. Just make sure the feet are facing the wall and that the toes are touching the wall. I use this outcome measure on all my patients who have a loss of shoulder elevation for any reason, such as post-op, post-dislocations or adhesive capsulitis. Measurements are usually accurate to the nearest one to two centimeters. Patients can turn this outcome measure into a motivating home exercise program on a wall or a door frame at home. Shoulder outcome measure number four, active reach up test. You may use a star pole, which is also part of the star mat package and simply measure the distance the measuring tape is raised. Just make sure that trunk rotation is avoided. Other than that, lift the arm up overhead in any way possible. I use this outcome measure on all my patients who have a loss of shoulder elevation for any reason, such as post-op, post-dislocation, or adhesive capsulitis. Patients actually enjoy the active reach-up test and find it to be a motivating outcome measure. Immediately after manual therapy and with each treatment session, they attempt to beat their previous score. Shoulder outcome measure number five, active horizontal adduction with self overpressure. I use this outcome measure only if I see an obvious asymmetry during horizontal adduction. You may use a standard measuring tape and measure the distance from the olecranon process to the opposite acromion process. Just make sure that the shoulder is maintained at 90 degrees flexion. 
Although the scapula also protracts during the test, a tight posterior capsule can still be detected. I often assess this on my patients with impingement syndromes whom I suspect may have a tight posterior capsule, such as those involved in racket sports or sports requiring overhead throwing. I hope that you found these five shoulder outcome measures valuable. I'll eagerly await studies to one day support the reliability and validity of these outcome measures. For now, I hope that you get to use the hand behind back test, the lateral rotation at zero degrees test, the wall reach up test, the active reach up test, and finally the horizontal adduction test. Please view other Aptai short videos by visiting the Aptai video library on aptai.ca. And thank you for joining me.